we are in a crisis situation right now for Harry and Meghan's brand. The reality is they've got to secure some new opportunities and they've got to do it fast. This seems like crisis time for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here in Los Angeles, California. I do imagine, aside from this new agency they have, William Morris Endeavor, whose job it is to secure them lucrative opportunities, whether that's in commercials or influencer, you know, posts, or, um, you know, they're saying that they're attempting to make Megan the new Gwyneth Paltrow. They're looking for job opportunities. But what Harry and Megan need right now is a really good public publicist to turn everything back around uh, because, you know, polling suggests that Harry and Meghan are at an all-time low universally, not only in the United States, but in the UK as well. Between the Spotify dump and the rumors that Netflix is having issues with their content, you know, their value has dropped immensely in Hollywood. What that means is when all of the headlines are Harry and Meghan have signed these million dollar deals with Spotify and with Netflix. Other companies are going, wow, that they're worth a lot of money. Uh, we're going to have to fork up a lot to be associated with them. But when Spotify drops the Sussexes and says it's because they are not productive enough, they didn't create enough content, and it looks premature. Bill Simmons is a Spotify executive that works specifically in the sports department, and he actually had a Zoom meeting with Prince Harry, where they were supposed to go over ideas and they were supposed to, you know, kind of, it was supposed to be a creative meeting. Now, Bill says, if you get him intoxicated enough, he will go into the details, but he, he, he stopped right there on his podcast. But he did hint that Harry left a lot to be desired when it came to creativity. Wall Street Journal later informing us that some of his pitches to Spotify included sitting down and interviewing Putin interviewing Donald Trump about both about their childhood traumas, talking to the Pope about religion. If that is what he was pitching to Bill Simmons, I'm sure Bill was sitting there thinking, my God, how delusional are you? Your status has changed. You're more of a celebrity than royalty. So it's going to be harder to secure those kind of interviews. Bill Simmons saying that they're grifters. He was very critical of them, cursed them, <laughs> cursed them out several times. I think it was a reaction that a lot of people feel. I think a lot of people probably agreed with him, but it definitely started the, the pile on, which we've seen over the last few weeks. Now companies are saying, A, do we even want to work with the Sussexes? And B, are they worth that much going forward? And, and quite frankly, the answer is no. So they've got to turn this around. They've got to to correct the narrative um, that they're easy to work with. They're not difficult. You know, the Wall Street Journal article says that Megan was making changes at the very last minute to her podcast, that it was hard to get her podcast up and running. She was calling people high at the top saying, can you help me make these changes right at the deadline? They don't want to be known as difficult. They need their popularity to increase. They need for people to root for them again versus like, oh, not them again. I think that they need some friends, some more allies. We haven't seen Oprah speak up for them in, in recent months. We haven't seen Tyler Perry since the Netflix special. And honestly, people probably want to see different personalities come out and say that they're in support of them. Taylor Swift, she doesn't deal with bullies and she doesn't deal with people that are considered difficult. I think that Megan, unfortunately, has a reputation for being not very pleasant to work with or for maybe a bully. There were bully accusations hurled against her at the palace that the palace investigated, but unfortunately refused to release the results of that. I think Taylor, who we've seen actually get on a stage and perform with Prince William, Taylor likely rejected Meghan Markle's invitation because Taylor sides with the royal family on all things Sussex drama. Also, it's been rumored forever that Reese Witherspoon was also invited on Meghan's podcast and she allegedly turned that down as well. Like I said before, we are in a crisis situation right now for Harry and Meghan's brand. They, they're not just needing to pay their mortgage. They've also got to pay for 
intense security in, in Montecito and Spotify was, you know, allegedly horrified that Harry even made that comment to Oprah Winfrey that he was securing these brand deals to just to survive. Realistically, I see Prince Harry doing the speaker circuit. I've said this for years and I'm not being condescending when I say I think he wants to be like Mark Zuckerberg or Barack Obama, where they're paid a lot of money to show up and talk to businessmen, to talk to corporations. Harry has dealt with a lot in his life. Harry is a war veteran. I mean, I think he's accomplished enough to stand on a stage and talk to people about how he went from point A to point B. With Megan, I truly think we're going to see the TIG 2.0. It might not be the TIG. She's probably come up with some other cute little name. I think she's gonna go into influencer mode. And you know what? That's not a bad gig. It's a little work for a lot of money. The reality is they've got to secure some new opportunities and they've got to do it fast.